feedback. You can ask me, why do we need feedback? So because we have to control the gain of the operational amplifier and operate the op amp in the linear region. So we know the uh, voltage transfer curve. So we want to operate the uh, operational amplifier in this linear region. So this region, uh, let me take the color. So this region from this, from here to here, that is called the linear region because the line is going like linearly upright. So we want to operate the, uh, the IC into this linear region. So for this, we have to control the gain. So we must need a feedback. And there are two types of feedbacks. One is called positive feedback. Another one is called negative feedback. What is that positive feedback? So positive feedback means it's uh, very simple. So if he, now we are feeding back this output to the input, but here this is the positive input terminal. Remember, we have two inputs, right, in this uh, chip. So this positive input terminal is called non-inverting input terminal. And this is a positive, that's why we call this is a positive feedback. So we are taking and then feeding to the positive side of the uh, operational amplifier. But this is really unstable configuration. So mostly in practical circuits or almost we never use this kind of feedback because the circuit will be unstable. So then what is the alternative solution? So we can do the same. So here, uh, here you remember we grounded the other terminal. So here we grounded the positive terminal and we are giving the feedback to the negative terminal. So we are giving to the negative terminal. So we call this as a negative feedback. In practical circuits, we always use this negative feedback operational amplifiers. So we will study further uh, about this circuit. So you should know now why we call this as a negative feedback because we are feeding to this negative input terminal and everything else is the same. The other input got grounded. It means the voltage potential at this terminal is zero volt. So here you can apply whatever the voltage you want and you will get the output and you are getting fraction of the output and feeding back through this resistor. Okay, so negative feedback, we are we, we, we just forget about positive feedback and we are just going, going to focus on negative feedback. So what is negative feedback? Before that, negative feedback is classified into two types. One is called inverting op-amp with negative feedback. And another one is called non-inverting op-amp with negative feedback. So what is this inverting op-amp non-inverting op-amp. So I already told you previously, inverting means you are applying the input to the negative input terminal. Non-inverting means you are applying the input to the positive input terminal. And in both cases, you are grounding the other input. For example, here, this is called inverting operational amplifier or simply we can call inverting op-amp. So here, what we are doing, the same circuit, the symbol, what we had seen. So here, the positive terminal got grounded and we are applying the input V in to this negative input terminal or inverting input terminal. So whatever the input you apply here, it will be inverted 180 degree in the output. So this is Vn and this is the R1. This is the input resistor. We are adding one more input resistor here. Uh, to control the applied input signal. And also we are getting this output and then feeding back to this negative input terminal via this feedback resistor. So here this R1 is called input resistor and the RF is called output, sorry, feedback resistor. So everything else is the same. This is called inverting operational amplifier with negative feedback. Uh, I change back my pen color again to red. Okay, so now this is the configuration of this negative feedback with the inverting op-amp. Um, Non-inverting op-amp with negative feedback. Here, what, what, what is the difference between this and this? So here, we are grounding this negative terminal. You see here, and we are, uh, but still, we are give, having the feedback resistor in this same terminal. 
but instead of applying the input to this negative, we are applying the input to this positive. So just opposite. So we are instead of here applying the input, we are applying the input to this non-inverting input terminal. That is why it's called non-inverting op amp with negative feedback. We cannot give the feedback to this uh, positive because I already told you positive feedback is not allowed because it leads to unstable of the circuit and uh, instability. So now this is the non-inverting operational amplifier. It has also the input resistor and it has the feedback resistor and everything else is the same. Now we will see a little more detail now. Okay, under negative feedback, applying input to this negative input terminal and grounding the positive input terminal. So this is what explained here. So applying the input to this negative input terminal and then grounding the positive input terminal. The non-inverting is the opposite. So applying input to this positive input terminal and grounding the negative input terminal. So we will just move on now. So inverting op amp with negative feedback configuration. The circuit I showed you, this, this one we are seeing again. Um, so here, through this negative feedback, we are controlling the output voltage of this operational amplifier. How can we control? So we will see that. Uh, why should we control the output voltage? Because in such a way that the output voltage is always less than the saturation voltage. So the problem here uh, without feedback is whatever input you apply, immediately the output reaches the saturation region. We do not want that. We want to control the output voltage in the linear region. So uh, that is why we want this feedback. Uh, so we can say that we are operating this operational amplifier in the linear region. That is, uh, that is our goal actually. We want to operate the uh, operational amplifier in the linear region. Uh, I will explain a little more detail then you will understand uh, what I mean. So now we will find the expression or the equation for this V in and V out. This is the V in and this is the V out. And we will understand the concept of virtual ground. So, so far what we had seen is we started with the closed loop configuration. The first one we see, we saw open loop. Now we are seeing the closed loop. In the closed loop, we are not going to consider the positive feedback. We are considering only the negative feedback. In the negative feedback, now we will, we will find out the equation for V in and V out and understand the concept of virtual ground. So um, this is the uh, circuit constructions. So you can uh, build the circuit or um, draw the circuit at least for now this way. So here we, have, we are applying the input voltage via this input resistor R1 to this negative input terminal and the positive input terminal is grounded. And here we are taking part of the output and then feeding back to this negative input terminal via this feedback resistor RF. So R1 is the input resistor and RF is the uh, feedback resistor. Uh, so that's all about the construction of this operational amplifier. Uh, actually, you can also use the breadboard in the lab. You can just construct a very simple inverting operational amplifier with negative feedback. Uh, so now how uh, output voltage V out is equal to 10 volt. Let us assume here the output voltage is 10 volt. And the operational amplifier gain is 10 to the power six, 10 to the power six or 10 to the power five. It's not a matter. Now let us assume A is 10 to the power six. And we know the formula for the output is A times V1 minus V2. So here, uh, so ten, uh, V out we know already 10 volt and we know the gain value and V1 minus V2. So we are I'm just taking this 10 to the power uh, six to this other side, 10 divided by 10 to the power six, then it will become 10 microvolt. So V1 minus V2 is equal to 10 microvolt. It means uh, 10 microvolt is really very small value. We can just negligible or we can just ignore this. In that case, V1 minus V2 is equal to zero. So V1 is equal to V2.
because here I grounded one terminal, even though I apply the input voltage, this node, you know, this node is the meeting point of uh, input resistor and the feedback resistor. So this node is called Vx. So this Vx is equal to zero. Why? Uh, we can say that there is a virtual shot between this inverting and non-inverting <coughs> input terminals. So based on this example, uh, once you connect one terminal to the ground, the other terminal, uh, uh, especially this node Vx is all, also going to be zero. Once you connect this input, uh, sorry, here now we are connecting this positive input terminal to the ground. So this is ground. It means the voltage potential at this point, this uh, terminal is zero. So this same voltage potential is also available at this node Vx. So physically, we are not get, having any short circuit between this terminal and this node, but still virtually the same voltage will be available at this node. That is why we call this as a virtual ground, a virtual ground concept. So uh, the term virtual means these two terminals are not actually short-circuited, but they are virtually short-circuited. They are not physically short-circuited, but they are virtually short-circuited. So whatever voltage that appears at one terminal, whatever voltage appears at one terminal, the exact same voltage will appear at another input terminal. So this is what you have to remember. So this concept is called virtual ground. We are grounding one terminal, even though we don't ground the other terminal, but this is also uh, in the zero potential. So it, that's why we call this as a virtual ground concept. Now, uh, the concept of virtual ground is applicable whenever we provide negative feedback to this operational amplifier. So this virtual ground concept is very, very important in our, uh, at least in our lecture, uh, also in practical circuit implementations, because when we, derive the equations for a gain input output we are going to use this concept okay so using this concept of virtual ground now we will derive the expression for v in and v out